Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this channel is about vermiculture or worm farming. I do most of my work inside of my house in my basement. And in particular, today's video is going to be about red wigglers. And this is uh, a set of bins, three bins that are only red wigglers. And they are about a pound and a half per container. And they get fed this, which is my prepared bedding, which is shredded cardboard, paper, and uh, coconut coir, with some amendments like eggshell. Okay, so last time we found a surprise that everybody had finished their food and needed to be migrated out. So today we're going to see how the migration is going. This is bin number three, and we're I'll put all the specifics as to how long everything's been going, but the idea was last time is that we are going to migrate them out of this finished castings here and get them started in an area brand new so they have new bedding and new food. So as I'm looking through here, it's good and dry, which is always a good uh, way to get worms to leave, is to have one portion of the bin to dry out quite a bit. And uh, it seems to have worked fabulously, because uh, last time there was just worms everywhere. And, oop, dang, got too close. Okay, so I think there's going to be a... A transition between the migration to and from area that I'm gonna have to be careful with. Now I am still seeing some cocoons in here that have not hatched so this will go into a uh, it will get sifted and then hopefully the cocoons can be recovered. So what we're yeah I'm just getting too close here so I'm gonna pull this out and put this into uh, the area where I leave castings to get sifted and then we're going to come back and look over here and see what the worms are doing. For the most part I just move them out to a mortar tray. These are probably dry enough to sift quite honestly so they won't have to wait very long. I haven't ran into any worms in this portion just some cocoons. So they did a really good job with this migration. And that is kind of some of the problem sometimes when you're trying to get worms out of castings because you want to use them. And uh, the area where the castings are is maybe too comfortable for them. So, you know, in addition to trying to entice them over here with good food, you also um, would be wise to make the area that you're trying to get them out of a little bit less hospitable. All right, so I think that does it. So now we can look. I left the lid off because this was very muddy the last time we looked in here. So the top here is very dry and moldy, apparently, which is fine. We will get that wet with the next batch of food and also with some new bedding. So now that we have the old castings out of the way, we can look over here and see what the red wigglers are doing. So they look like they've really really, you know, worked over this part over here. But there, a lot of the good bacteria is in with the castings, so I'm not going to try and separate them from that and do a 100% harvest. I'm just going to incorporate everything together so that the good bacteria gets in with the uh, not so fabulous dry casting or dry paper bedding. And then once I give them some new bedding and some new food, then basically it will be paradise for them. So these guys are going to get one more handful of the bedding. And I didn't have anything prepared for the red wigglers. So they're kind of getting deconstructed bedding here. And I will go ahead and put some eggshell in here. Normally my prepared bedding has all of this stuff already in it. But because of the... Uh, <coughs> the camera stopped. And until I go to editing, I don't know when it stopped. But this is bin number two, and I have taken out the castings that are good. But unfortunately, this bin kind of is a little too overworked, and uh, it's going to take a little bit longer for me to get the worms to completely migrate out. So I'm going to take the, the finished castings and move them over here, and then we will expand the migration area and hopefully that will entice them to move out 
of these. But they are a little bit overdone and kind of if you let the worms go more than six months they re-eat their own castings and then they get really super sticky sticky and uh, when they dry they turn into kind of hard pellets which I, I try to avoid hey guys it's future Anne. i'm going to basically go through all of the castings that i uh, put in this one mortar tray and i'm gonna combine all those super sticky bits and combine them with the sort of dry bits and hopefully I will come up with a homogeneous sort of casting that will be ready to sift by tomorrow. So hopefully uh, this all works out and this is something that you can incorporate in the event that you have super sticky stuff and super dry stuff. You can always have them meet in the middle. P.S. I am picking out all of these worms, and they're going to go live with blue. All right, back to present and. So let's, let's look over here at the area that I was trying to migrate them out of. I did feed them, top feed them some of the, the worm chow, and it looks like it's molded for some reason. But we'll look over here. And they've already done a really nice job on these castings here. You can see they've made a nice little worm ball over here underneath where the worm chow was. I don't see any discernible food over here except for that avocado pit. So it's definitely time to get them some food. But I'm going to mix in these really dry bedding bits in hopes that that will help them work through it and then uh, we will get them some more bedding and some more food and then this can scoot over. And I know I always irritate myself when I mix up the paper and the finished castings, but I always sift, so we'll be okay over here. Let me give them a big handful. If you also have a worm farm, let me know what kind of worms do you grow and which ones are your favorites. Um, I really do I like the European night crawlers for their size and their consistency, but in my opinion, you really can't beat the red wigglers for how much food they go through uh, in a short amount of time. I think that they're the fastest workers. Uh, even so, with uh, my mixed species bins, I think that the red wigglers eat food faster than you know any kind of worm, uh, at least people scraps. The African night crawlers, of course, go through paper faster than anything. So let's get these guys some food. So they are also going to get some banana. Looks like they're going to get a corn cob, more pizza crust. Yeah, I'm that person. Just don't like the crust. We're going to give them a little bit of the uh, warm meal. And then we will cover that up. And since it is drying out a little bit too fast, I am going to put their lids on a little bit better. Normally, I kind of leave them cocked off to the side so they can get um, good air. But uh, being that this is starting to dry out faster than I want, I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on a little bit more and check on them a little bit more often. Often, new people will put the lids on completely. And one of the reasons the worms try and crawl out is because there's moisture and it's easy for them to move over surfaces that have moisture. So it's counterintuitive to me, but if you leave the lid off, the worms stay put. Um, so I am going to leave the lid just a little bit off so that it keeps the uh, perimeter of the bin dry. Uh, but hopefully it'll keep in enough moisture in the paper so that the worms will be able to work through this paper a little faster. All right, let me go get the last bin. If you're liking this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, now we're back to bin number one. And it looks like they've made really nice castings here. So as I'm kind of going at it, I'm just going to kind of scrape off the top. But it looks like these worms have not migrated very well. In fact, as I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing worms. So. These guys aren't ready to get out of this material quite yet. And you know, even though we started the migration on all of them, one bin, all the worms were perfectly willing to get out. Second bin, they were sort of wanting to get out. And now this bin, apparently not. They don't, they're not ready. And as I always say, worms do what they want and uh, we get to deal with it. 
So I'm going to kind of move up all of the mostly finished castings to one side here. And then I'm going to investigate what they've done with the food and bedding that I have given them recently. There must be something about my new recipe that is making things mold. If you have any experience with alfalfa, does it mold more than other stuff? Uh, I don't recall having this problem before when I top feed with worm chow. So put the comments below. Uh, what am I doing wrong here? Um, <laughs> so obviously I am not I'm not saying I'm an expert and you should absolutely do everything that I do. I'm just saying I'm taking you along on a chronicle of my journey of being a worm farmer. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, I totally wouldn't do that or, or whatever. And uh, please leave those comments below because I am still learning. I am not an expert. Um, I'm just kind of taking you with me on my journey of being a worm herder. So with that being said, I'm going to flip over and we do kind of have a worm ball here. So it seems like a majority of the worms have moved over to this side. So that's good. So just this part, it does have some worms, but not, not all of them. So this is kind of dry. So again, I'm going to just incorporate the damp underneath part of the worms uh, bedding into this kind of drier stuff. And I'm going to break up this stuff that was in there last time and see what I can do to make that go faster. I think they got fed like granola or something last time. Uh, they do love their mango peel or their mango seeds. Look at that. They're just all snuggled up in there. Well, we'll leave them alone. They're happy. So then I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other bin, the other two bins, and I'm going to get them some nice wet bedding and some new food. Big handful of that. And then some coconut coir so that the paper doesn't stick together. Because you can see there's a lot of junk mail in over here. And the, the best way to keep it from clumping together and being a pain in my behind is to mix in a good amount of coconut coir or peat moss, whatever you have available in your area, so that it doesn't end up in these hard clumps. So I'm going to incorporate that pretty good. That part of the bucket must have been more junk mail but we can keep incorporating things and then that way basically I'm hopefully helping the worms out so that they can eat it because if it gets stuck together it becomes anaerobic and then then they're not going to be able to eat it but we're going to kind of level this part out here and make room for their food okay looks like avocados and corn little bananas and a peach. And then I'm going to give them some of the, uh, the worm chow, the new worm chow, kind of fluff that in a little bit. Cover that up because we don't want to attract any sort of flying insects. And then hopefully, let's stretch this out a little bit. Maybe it'll get drier. Yeah, let's do that. And that way the surface area will help it dry and hopefully they will move over to here. So as you've gotten to this part of the video, you might be interested in seeing more on the, the trials and tribulations of the Red Wigglers. And there's a playlist that I'm going to put right there. Now YouTube thinks that you're going to want to watch this video. So you make your choice. Thank you for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.